Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. We continue standing as we sing hymn number 13, God Moves in a Mysterious Way. <coughs> Oh, Lord. 
O one of our lips. Our God, O God, may you speak to us. O God, may you speak to us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord is here. In the first hand of this morning, we speak on one. I will listen to what the Lord God will say. For he shall speak peace to his people and to the people, that they turn not again to God. Truly, his salvation is near to those who fear him. That his glory be found in our hands. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace and his people. Truth shall spring up from the earth. And righteousness will come from heaven. The Lord will indeed give all that is good. Our land will be the Righteousness shall go before him. And the earth is steps in the way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Reading from Mark chapter 6. King Herod heard of Jesus' disciples casting out demons and anointing with oil in many who were sick and curing them, for Jesus' name had become known. 
Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason the powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on the account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling her, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him, and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came, when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased her and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She, she replied, The head of John the Baptizer. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a flower. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came back and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the word of the Lord. I speak to God. We now stand and sing him from thanks and praise number 28, Come thy fount of every blessing. Take our lives and let them be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Amen.
start with a question again this morning. Is anyone willing and able to tell me the chemical symbol given to the element lead on the periodic table? Don't all shout at once. PB, excellent, well done, well done. PB. So lead is uh, one of those elements on the periodic table uh, whose symbol has absolutely nothing to do with the English name for the element. Indeed, it is derived from the Latin name. In this case, the Latin word uh, from which we get symbol PB is plumbum. Other examples include K, the symbol for potassium, from the Latin word calium, and HG, uh, the uh, symbol for mercury, from the Latin word hydrogerum, meaning liquid silver. Lead was used in Roman times to make pipes to carry water, before, that it, was, before it was known that it is toxic. And indeed we see uh, plumbum, the Latin word, uh, still present in English words today. Think of plumber, plumbing, those are all derived from the Latin plumbum. Furthermore, lead is also a very dense metal and therefore was often used as a weight at the end of a plumb line. In our Old Testament reading this morning, Amos receives a vision of the Lord standing beside a wall with a plumb line. A plumb line is used by builders to ensure that walls are built perfectly vertically. The wall in Amos' vision represents God's covenant people Israel, with the Lord as the great architect inspecting the wall to see if it meets his divine standards. Subsequently, judgment is pronounced against the house of Jeroboam. Amos' words are not welcome at the king's court, and he is urged to flee away. In his defence, Amos states that he is neither a prophet nor the son of one, but merely a humble person chosen by the Lord to prophesy to the people of Israel. It is interesting to note the parallels here with John the Baptist, who we heard about in our Gospel reading. John the Baptist was the forerunner to Jesus. Like Amos, he did not call himself a prophet. Similarly, he was appointed by God to call Israel to repentance. Jesus said of him in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 11, Truly I tell you, among those born, among those born of women, no one has risen greater than John the Baptist. Today's Gospel follows on directly from that of last week, where Jesus sent out the twelve two by two. News of this has clearly reached King Herod, who is worried that Jesus is actually John the Baptist, raised from the dead. St. Mark then takes the time in his Gospel to go off on a tangent to tell us in detail about the circumstances leading up to John's beheading. Our question this morning, therefore, is what can we learn from this sorry tale? At first glance, the two passages seem unrelated, but, as is often the case with the lectionary, on a closer inspection, a number of similarities appear. Both readings make reference to a plumb line, and both feature a main character who finds themselves unwelcome at the king's court. In Amos, the plumb line is explicit in his vision, whereas in the Gospel it is implied in John's words to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. The law referred to here is the Levitical law found in both Leviticus chapter 18 verse 16 and chapter 20 verse 21. It is important to note that King Herod here is Her Herod Antipas, a son of Herod the Great, who ordered the slaughter of the innocents that we hear about during the Epiphany just after Christmas. Antipas was otherwise known as King Herod or Herod the Tetrarch, meaning he was one of the four rulers of what had been his father's kingdom. This is the same King Herod 
to whom Pilate had Jesus sent just prior to his crucifixion. Whilst the words of both Amos and John failed to find a receptive audience at the courts of Jeroboam and Herod, respectively, it is interesting to note that this is where a contrast arises. Whilst Amos is told and given the opportunity to flee, John is imprisoned, yet protected by Herod, who we are told like to listen to him. So, for an undisclosed period of time, John is safe from the wrath of Herodias, albeit in the desert fortress palace complex at Nicaris, which is to the east of the Dead Sea, in what is modern day Jordan. However, all of that changes in an instant with a deceptive and deadly dance at Herod's rather boisterous birthday banquet. In the main text of the New Revised Standard Version, we are told that his daughter Herodias came in and danced. However, a footnote records that variants of the Greek text may be translated as the daughter of Herodias herself. Indeed, this would seem to be confirmed by St. Matthew's account in his Gospel, chapter 14, verse 6. Normally, this type of dance would have been performed by the professional court dancers known as the hetera. Therefore, it would have been quite the scandal for a woman of rank, such as the daughter of Herodias, to dance in this fashion. Scandal or not, the Gospel account tells us that her dancing pleased Herod and his guests. His guard down, Herod offers her anything up to half his kingdom. When her daughter momentarily leaves the banquet to consult with her as to what she ought to request, Herodias seizes her moment to be done with John the Baptist once and for all. Adding insult to injury, John's head is to be served on a platter. One can imagine that Herod sobered up almost instantly at this point. We are told that the king was deeply grieved. The request genuinely pained him. The only other place where the same Greek term is used in the New Testament for deeply grieved is also in St Mark's Gospel, but later in chapter 14, verse 34, where we are told that Jesus is deeply grieved whilst praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. However, despite his deep grief and distress, Herod had an oath to keep, and an audience in front of which he no doubt felt that he had to see a face. He could not risk having his military and political position weakened, so Herod gave the necessary order, and both Herodias and her daughter had their wicked way. John the Baptist, an innocent man, who had simply held the plumb line of God's divine standards up to Herod and his wife, was murdered. What a tragedy. For a few brief moments, a glimmer of light, albeit in the form of deep grief, had dawned on Herod's conscience. Yet he quickly had extinguished it, because he feared what others would think of him. No one present at the king's court that day spoke up for John the Baptist. The one who had the power to save him, to rise to his defence, namely King Herod, caved in to peer pressure. Albeit with less serious consequences, how often are we not all the same? I'm sure we can all think of times when the opinions of others have kept us from opening our minds, following the best instincts of our own conscience or the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit. I am reminded of a quote from Martin Niemöller, who was a prominent German pastor during the rise of the Nazis. He said, First, they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out, because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out, because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. 
The witness of John the Baptist in today's Gospel not only encourages us to hold God's thumb line to our own lives and from time to time those of our colleagues, friends and family, but also it points forward to the ultimate murder of an innocent man. I mentioned earlier that John the Baptist was the forerunner to Jesus. Therefore, everything about John, even his death, is about recognising and pointing to Jesus. He recognised Jesus whilst they were both still in their mother's womb. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 41 to 43 tell us that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? Furthermore, John the Baptist recognised Jesus as the Lamb of God in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 29. And in this same chapter, we see that John's baptism with water pointed forward to Jesus as the one who would baptise with the Holy Spirit. John may not have realised it, but even his death, beheaded on the orders of Herod, pointed forward to the death of Jesus. John had recognised that he wasn't even worthy to untie Jesus' sandal. He may have been the forerunner, but he was inferior in every way. Whilst both the intentional killings of John and Jesus were an affront to justice, at least John was spared the humiliations of the kangaroo court and scourging that Jesus was subjected to prior to the prolonged agony of crucifixion. Furthermore, unlike John or any of us, Jesus was entirely innocent in every way and gave up his life willingly. So it was more than murder, it was a perfect sacrifice. By his sacrifice, we are enabled to receive forgiveness for all our failings, even when we fail to speak up for or come to the aid of others. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sing him 652. Lead us to the Father of us.
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to the is called to be your messenger on earth and the channel of your grace. Keep us faithful in the service of the gospel. Inspire and strengthen it to speak out against evil in the world today and in speaking out defend the church in times of adversity. Be merciful to those who are persecuted. Protect our fellow Christians who suffer imprisonment or torture because of their witness to truth and righteousness in the service of your kingdom. We pray for all who have been called to lead the church in our time and in this place, for Archbishop John and for him. We pray for those who like these have heard, listened and obeyed their call and are on that journey of service. And we pray especially for Ashley and Jesus. Give them and all who minister in your church a deepening assurance of your call. Guide and protect them when they face difficult challenges, and may the power of the Holy Spirit enable them to accomplish all that you would have them to do. Lord, in your mercy. God of all authority, we pray for our world and family of nations. Guide those in authority to use their power for good. Will the innocent will not suffer in the unrest and violence of these times. We pray for all those in positions of power across the world, and locally we pray especially for those who have been recently elected as MPs. Shield them from temptations of easy speech, from intolerance or party spirit. Surround them with good counsel, give them wisdom of mind and strength of character. To put loyalty to what is right above loyalty to the party or what is popular. So that they may serve with honour, to promote, sustain, and improve the welfare of all under their care, so that your kingdom may be seen here on earth. Lord, 
in your mercy. Lord, protect her. Feed us, our families, friends and neighbours, from all anger and violence, whether it comes from among us or from outside. May we not be ashamed to acknowledge you as our Saviour and be good disciples by what we do and by what we say. May we learn to love and honour all your children so that peace and goodwill are the hallmarks of this community, yeah. reflecting your love for us. And we pray for all in this community who are considering taking further steps in their discipleship. May they set aside doubts about who they are or where they are from, but like in us, to listen and step forward in faith into the way we have come for them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord God, we pray for all those in prison whose freedom has been taken away from them, whether for crime or conscience sake. Visit them with your mercy. Comfort them in the lonely and bitter hours. May they experience your love, a love that forgives and welcomes all, so they may face the future with you courage and hope. We pray for those who be cruel, violent and destructive lives, for victims of oppression or abuse, and all who suffer mental anguish or physical pain. In this holy place, in which we have the privilege to pray together, we remember all those in need and bring those known to us to you by name. Peace and joy that they may know that you are with them, that they are safe, and nothing can take them from the strong and loving hands of their heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy. In your Father. As we remember the death of John the Baptist, we pray for all who have died violently and alone, granting the peace that was denied them in their final moments on this earth and bring them to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. And as disciples of Christ, imperfect and unworthy in so many ways, let us all join together in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all. There is no midweek Eucharist during July and the summer holiday cover on our Reverend Jackie and Reverend Rhonda and their details are on the back of the sheet. And our final end is in 259. 